Jacob, I'm here. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty Porsche Taycan Turbo. Twenty twenty Porsche Taycan Turbo S with launch control. With launch control. Oh my god. Oh, okay. That's fast. So hit me with the horsepower and torque. The turbo has up to 670 horsepower and 626 pound-feet of torque during launch control, otherwise 616 horsepower, and the Turbo S has up to 750 horsepower, 774 pound-feet of torque in overboost during launch control, otherwise the same 616 horsepower. So I guess if I floor it, it'll be pretty fast. <laughs> and since I'm in the slightly faster one, apparently, Yep, feels just as fast as that one. Be honest, they're pretty much the exact same speed unless you're in launch control, but even in launch control, pretty much no one's gonna feel the difference because they're both faster than pretty much anything you've ever driven in your life. Yeah, so the turbo is actually rated for zero to 100 kilometers in 3.2 seconds. The turbo S is 2.8 seconds, but in reality, they're pretty much identical and they feel the same. So as most of you guys know, we've already reviewed the Taycan Turbo S. Now we're gonna compare both to see if it really matters, do you need the Turbo S more than the Turbo? But first, we're super excited to announce that again, we're partnering with Omaze. The last two times, we did the G63 and the E63S. This time, we wanna show you all of the cars that you can enter for a chance to win on omaze.com slash all cars. The best part about Omaze is that every one of their prizes is paired with an incredible cause. So when you donate for the chance to win a car, you're supporting the work of some really great organizations. All you have to do is go to omaze.com slash all cars and enter for your chance to win one. Taxes and shipping on the cars are included and Omaze will even throw in $20,000 cash for the lucky winner. Some of the cars that you can win right now are actually cars that we've driven, like the 2020 Corvette Stingray Z51, which is benefiting the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center. There's also the 2020 Range Rover Sport SVR, which is benefiting Feeding America, which is supplying America's network of over 200 food banks. And there's also the 2020 Porsche Taycan Turbo, which is one of the cars that we're driving right now. And that's benefiting the Dempsey Center, which is committed to making life better for people managing the impact of cancer. So go to amaze.com slash all cars or click the link below to see all of the cars that you can enter for a chance to win right now. And before we get back to the review, quickly here are some of the past winners of some of those awesome cars. Hey Yuri, I think you know what time it is. Send it. <laughs> oh man, it's so fast. I feel like there's pretty much no difference. No, there really isn't, and the fact that they have the same horsepower when not in launch control means that there really isn't. Okay, so let's briefly touch on the looks because we've already reviewed one of these and talked about the looks, but one of these has the perfect wheels. Yes, and it's the gray one that I'm driving, which is the Turbo S, and you can get these wheels on the Turbo, but the Turbo S just comes with these wheels. And it's cool because you can get the white wheels on anything, but you also can get them color matched. So on the Turbo S, it's silver, it's color matched to the car, but you can also get them in white and you can also get them in white for non-white versions. Yeah, so if you watched our other review, you know how much that we complained about not having these wheels and I love having these wheels so much. You have to get these wheels if you buy this car. And then another difference is that the Taycan Turbo has color matched accents at the front and on the sides where the Turbo S has carbon fiber instead. What do you think looks better? I think they both look pretty good. The darker accents make it look a little bit more aggressive, but I like the white color match more, I think. Yeah, I think I'd go color match as well. And then another difference we have is on the electric gas caps or whatever they're called. The electricity charging caps. The electric fuel door, I think? Okay. Yeah, yeah, fuel door. The Turbo S, you can slide your finger below and it's the cool electronic version that comes up. And on the turbo, you just need to click and it flaps up. But you can get it optionally on the turbo as well if you pay extra. And the last notable feature between the two is the brake calipers slash the brakes. The Turbo S comes standard with carbon ceramics and they are bright yellow and they stop you like crazy. <laughs> and this turbo has normal huge steel brakes. So we've got white calipers. Honestly, you're missing a lot of that pop and I feel like big yellow carbon ceramic brakes is like part of the image of the Taycan. I think the yellow calipers look amazing. I really don't think you need the carbon ceramics for a car like this, even though it does help stop the car quite well. I think you should realistically just get the turbo. I'm just gonna say that right off the bat. 
and I'm completely opposite. I think you should get the carbon ceramics because this car gets away from you because it's so fast, you're not used to it, and sometimes you really need those carbon ceramics to help slow you down. So then what would be the Continental recommended tire for the Porsche Taycan? That would be the Continental Pro Contact RX. And lastly, one is white, one is silver. The last one we had was a dark gray, which I absolutely hated because you couldn't see all the black accents. To be honest, after seeing them both, I think I'd be very fine with a silver instead of a white, even though I'm still team white. I think they should have switched the spec on these ones and the white should have had the amazing wheels. So I really like the white with the white wheels. Yeah, it's pretty much the exact same spec as the Mission E prototype, which is like everyone's favorite to have it just like the prototype. And so this is kind of a looks thing, but it's also a performance thing. The turbo actually has a better drag coefficient, which means it's more slippery in the air. I think it has something to do with the side vents, the brake duct. Yeah, so on the Turbo S, it's fake vents. You don't have any gap behind the wheel. And when you're looking at it from the side view, it's filled up, but on the turbo, it's fully open. So I think that's one of the things that helps make this car more slippery and get better fuel economy or battery economy because the turbo is the one that gets slightly better mileage. But it's totally weird that the faster one has fake vents and the slower one doesn't. Oh, it's the weirdest thing. Like you and I had to do like a quadruple take. We're like, is it? Yeah, I guess it is. So then what are the differences performance wise between the two? Well, they do have the exact same battery pack. It's 93 kilowatt hours, so it's not that. It's actually in the motors. They have the exact same motors in the back but in the front, the Taycan Turbo S has a slightly bigger motor. So they're both all wheel drive and that's one of the reasons why it can put down a little bit more horsepower and have a better launch. And the funny thing is the turbo is actually a little bit heavier and maybe it has something to do with those carbon ceramic brakes which are standard on the Turbo S. And just like our first Taycan Turbo S review, they both have a two speed transmission. It's the exact same one between them and we've both noticed a little bit of clunking kind of going between high speed and low speed when it changes between the speeds. Yeah, Jacob pointed out that it feels like you're going over a rumble strip, but I mean, it's cool that you could feel things happening in the car, especially electric cars, which take out a lot of the feeling. And if you put it into range mode, then that puts it into the higher gear all the time, so you would never feel that in range mode, but then it limits you to 120 kilometers per hour because it's a range mode. And that's one of the differences between the Taycan compared to the Tesla models. They don't have different speed transmissions. They just have a fixed one. Exactly. Porsche is pretty much the only company that has done that. And I think they did it more for like Autobahn, Nürburgring speeds and stuff like that. Yeah. So you get more torque and more efficiency, the best of both worlds. So I touched on the turbo having a slightly better range. Let's get to the range and charging stuff now. The turbo has a range of 201 miles or 323 kilometers and the Turbo S is 192 miles or 309 kilometers. So we did take note of the mileage and how many kilometers it said we could travel when we picked up the cars. We're going to let you know by the very end how many we actually did driving it completely normally, like doing launches, filming, sitting around with the AC on, and also taking it easy a bit on the highway. So now onto the charging times. For level three, 50 kilowatts, which is what most chargers are, it takes one and a half hours to get from five to 80%. Level three up to 270 kilowatts takes 22 and a half minutes for five to 80%. These charges are still rolling out and they are part of Electrify America and Electrify Canada. And Porsche owners do get three years of free electric charging at half an hour at a time. And on a level two charger, it charges in about 10 and a half hours. And one side of the Porsche has level two and the other side of the Porsche has level three. We've got electric fuel caps on both sides. But the turbo has it as part of an optional performance package, which also includes rear axle steering, whereas the Turbo S has rear axle steering, which is standard. And then we also have adaptive air suspension. It's super comfortable in all the drive modes and you can really see the car raise and lower when you switch it up. Yeah, so the drive modes are range, normal, sport, sport plus, and individual. Sport plus by default has the loud electric sport sound on the inside and I think it sounds awesome. I'm just gonna floor it right now. Oh, it's so cool, spaceship. Yeah, so it sounds like they're just going whoop, 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 and overlaying it instead of actually having gears, which is awesome. And even when you're slowing down, you get a lot of those cool electric car sounds. It definitely takes the cake, beats out the I-Pace for the best electric-y stuff. Yeah, spaceship sounds are where it's at for electric cars. And then even from outside, you can hear when it's backing up and using its parking sensors, it sounds like submarine radar, like bloop, 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 really cool. So both in Sport Plus, PSM Sport, we're gonna go through cliche, switch it up and see if we can tell a big difference or not. The first thing I noticed is Porsche steering. It is incredible. Pretty much feels like a 911. 
Yeah. Oh, and I'm plowing out a tiny bit on the turbo. They do understeer a little bit, but they're still so fun and very controllable. And floor it. Oh, it got some oversteer. But they are so flat. This suspension is incredible. So to me, the turbo plowed a bit. It didn't really oversteer, but I didn't push it too hard. But it did feel like it was on rails through there, like pretty much slot car territory. Way weird acceleration that I'm not used to. So now we're gonna switch it up, see if there's a difference in the launch, and then see if there's a difference through cliche corner. Turbo launch. Feels the same. And with 88 kilometers range left, it won't let me get into launch mode, but I'll floor it anyways. Okay, even with no launch control, it's still just as fast as the turbo with launch control, and this has less range. And since these are electric cars, even if you drive them in normal mode, they're still just as fast pretty much all the time. Unless you're in range mode, but we'll talk about that after Cliche Corner. So again, Sport Plus and PSM Sport. Okay, launching the turbo into Cliche Corner. Man, this just, it has a lot of grip, but it does have less grip than the Turbo S, and the Turbo S does come with much wider tires. Yeah, the Turbo S definitely oversteers a lot quicker before plowing and feels a lot grippier through there. But the steering feels exactly the same. The horsepower feels exactly the same. Yeah, to be honest, I think it comes down to tire size and tire style, like if you have a performance or an oil season. And if you fully turn off the traction control and try to do a little bit of a donut, it's actually really easy and super controllable. So then moving on to the interior, we've got pretty much the exact same interior that we had in the Taycan Turbo S rear that we did previously, but in this one, we've got red. Yeah, and in the turbo, we've got black, and in both of them, we still don't have the optional passenger screen. So if you want a lot of details, watch our older Turbo S review, but there's a few things I want to touch on in this because we have now logged into an account that gives us Apple Music. Yeah, so I've never used Apple Music before and I don't plan on using it, but I'm sure for someone that has Apple Music, this is great to have. Well, I think it's kind of dumb because if you have Apple Music, it's probably because you have an iPhone. And if you have an iPhone, you don't need Apple Music built into your car because you already have it on your phone. There you go, from an Apple person, not even an Android person hating on it. But I'm not hating on Apple, I'm just hating on having that built in in general. If it was Google Music, it would be just as dumb of a feature. And speaking of Google, do we have Android Auto in here? No, we don't. We still don't have Android Auto in here. I even tried, hey Porsche, enable Android Auto. Doesn't have it because it's not part of Porsche's stuff that they're including on any cars yet. And we have Apple CarPlay, and unlike the newer 911 Turbo S, we've got the wider one with bigger buttons so that the icons on the left aren't the size of a baby's fingernail. So being able to spend more time with this car, I got to be more in depth with a lot of things. Did you notice that on satellite radio, it does rewind by the way, to click the bottoms at the button, you pretty much need to slide your finger along this bottom panel. I didn't because I don't rewind satellite radios. Yeah, the buttons are really low at the bottom, but the ledge sticks out so much. So it's kind of tricky to hit stuff. Luckily, your fingernail still works to touch everything. And then the rest of the menus and everything is pretty easy to use, but you should be parked while using it because it is kind of confusing. These ones do have a Hey Porsche feature. Hey Porsche, turn on my heated seats. But it's not very helpful. It's pretty much only good for like, I have turned on the seat heating. Temperature and radio stations, but you can control your Apple Music through the voice commands. And then we also have our vehicle settings, so then you can go to your drive, your assist, your trip, and your comfort. But like a lot of other Porsches, a lot of the stuff is grayed out while driving. So we got to drive this on the highway and use Porsche's new lane keep assist system. Yes, I believe it's called Porsche InnoDrive, and it's quite an expensive option. And with Porsche InnoDrive, there's also a mode that'll read street signs and slow you down according to what it sees. I had to come to a full stop to turn that off because there's a lot of buttons you can't change while the vehicle is moving because that thing was pretty much a hazard. It would slow me down in the middle of nowhere while it saw a construction sign or something on the side. Once that was off, it was pretty decent to use. Yeah, so it reads the speed limit signs and if there's constant changes on the highway because of construction zones, it's actually very frustrating. Yeah, if all cars were actually autonomous and the robots actually drove like that, all the roads would be a wreck. So we've also got a 360 camera in here, which is pretty clear, but it does kind of warp along the sides. And what sucks is that it doesn't have a camera that shows you directly where your wheels are. So when you're parallel parking, you have to use an augmented reality mode, which makes it kind of scary because I don't know exactly how far the augmented reality is from the wheels and I don't want to scratch them. And then we still have the shortcut button on the steering wheel and the gauge cluster screen, but still like every other Porsche, you can't toggle right through your favorites on satellite radio. If you want it to go from channel five to channel four, you'd need to scroll through 300 channels. And unlike the 911 Turbo S, we do have these vents that we can't actually touch. We have to do it through the infotainment to change them. Yeah, it's pretty much a vent simulator 
built into the car if you're trying to punch it at your face. It's a total nightmare. I think I just leave it on diffuse and hope for the best with auto climb it. Yeah, I basically use auto climb in every car and I'm kind of forced to use it in this car. And in the Taycan, we also have a bottom screen which controls your infotainment. It does have a couple icons at the top which will show your Apple CarPlay when it's plugged in. So instead of having a hard button, that's kind of a nice shortcut to have. And you can also change your volume in two different ways on this bottom screen. Yes, yeah, so you can actually take two or three fingers and just slide up the screen, or you can also just press the buttons for volume at the bottom. But I've had the issue where every time I touch it, I slap my fingers too far and all of a sudden start changing my climate. And it also adds so much grease to the screen and in the wrong sunlight, you take this nice cool texture and pretty much just make it a full out smudge. Yeah, there's not too much gloss black in here, which is really nice. However, there's a lot of screens in here, which happen to be gloss black because they're glass. But it's nice that the main gauge cluster, you can make it into a reduced mode. Yeah, and I really like the power meter mode. It's kind of like RPMs without actually having RPMs. So then as for drive modes, I assume you've been in Sport Plus this whole time? Entire time, haven't changed it out. So I've been doing some range on the highway and it's pretty cool because it kind of limits you at 120 kilometers an hour. So if you do put your foot down, unless you actually floor it all the way down, it won't easily break 120. Yeah, I've used range mode on the highway and it's great for that. But what sucks about the range mode and everything to do with range here, we don't have a cool range score like we did in a lot of the other EV cars. And then we have buttons that we can actually press on our gauge display on the right and left of it. Which I've actually gotten pretty used to using after the first initial scare of I have to touch my gauge screen to control stuff. But it's definitely a little gross seeing your fingerprints there because they're right in front of you. And then you can also connect your Porsche through a Porsche Connect app, which lets you monitor, I guess, how much it charges overnight and everything. You can pre-climatize it. It's pretty useful, but I didn't have to use it because my car was in an underground. Yeah, and it's got a terrible rating on the Android App Store for some reason. And then as for general interiors, do you still like it as much as the earlier Taycan S we reviewed? I do like it, especially in the red, which is on the Turbo S, but even in black, this looks really nice and it's very functional and it's very comfortable. These seats are super comfortable. The bolstering is nice and soft. This center console armrest is so annoying because it doesn't actually stay up. So if you lift it up, you have to hold it up and I've actually cut my finger on it and now I'm bleeding. So I really don't like the center console. How about not being able to fully close the sunroof? Do you mind that? Cause I know you don't like open sunroofs. It is actually a bit of a pain. It's just, it's just constant sun. Even though it is dimmed, it's just constant and I can't turn it off. Well, would the visors help cover the sun? So we should probably do the visor test. Three, two, one. Fail. Does not pass. But you know what? If I was, if I was bald, I could probably hide my bald spot from the sun like this. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, if I drove like this or something. And I do fit pretty comfortably behind myself at six foot one and a half. And the trunk and the front, not too much space, the same as our last Taycan Turbo S review. So with all that out of the way, let's get to the prices. So the Turbo is the cheaper one, starting at $173,900. Canadian. And it's optioned out to $191,740. And how about the Turbo S? $213,900 to start. Canadian. And this one is $237,310. To be honest, it's a lot. But this car is so cool, probably one of Porsche's coolest non-GT cars. So now it's time to debate between both of these and also get to that 911 Turbo S question. I think personally between these two, I'm team Taycan Turbo, not Turbo S. I think you should just save the money because they're pretty much exactly the same as each other as much as I love the crazy launches in the Turbo S. Yeah, the launches are pretty much the same. The performance is pretty much the same. But if I had the chance, I'd go Turbo S because I would love to have a top trim in the press color, white on white with the yellow brake calipers. And we did drive the 911 Turbo S recently, and we've been debating which one we'd take. We would actually both take the Taycan Turbo, which is crazy to say. Yeah, I'd pick Taycan because the 911 Turbo S was cool, but I get more thrills out of this, and I think a GT 911 would be way cooler. So the 911 Turbo S just doesn't do it for me as much as everything else does. Yeah, the Taycan Turbo and the Turbo S do it for me way more than the 911 Turbo S did, but GT cars, no, I'd still take a GT car over any of these. Yeah, 100%. And to end it off, I wanna give a huge thanks to Omaze for partnering up with us on this video. So click the link below and let us know which car is your favorite on omaze.com slash allcars.